In this video, we're going to look at a couple of variations on for loops. So first of all, um, so far we've looked at for loops where you have a control variable that starts at some number, is incremented by one, and ends up at some other number. There's, there's a whole different kind of for loop that instead does its uh, computation for each element of some collection. So what's a collection? Well, there are many kinds in Visual Basic, and one example would be all the open workbooks, all the workbooks that are currently open. Now this example is right from Walkenbach's book, and uh, what it does is close all the workbooks except the active one. So it's called sub-inactive. A uh, book is defined as a workbook, and then we do for each book in workbooks, which is workbooks is a predefined quantity collection that's the collection of open workbooks. And the way we tell if it's the active workbook is compare the name of each workbook to the name of the active workbook. And if it's not the same, we close that workbook. So all of them will be closed except the active workbook by the time we finish this procedure. OK, here's another example. This time I used a range as a collection, a range of cells. And um, a cell is also a range, so I define my variable cell var as a bean of type range. And then I'm doing for each cell var in the range, an example range is a named range uh, defined in this workbook. Uh, if the value in that range is, in that cell rather, is bigger than 100, then I'm going to color this cell yellow. Now let's just see that in action. Um, I'm going to open this workbook here. And here I have my range, uh, example range. It's in uh, row 1, A through H. And I'm just going to run my subroutine. And you can see that I've colored yellow the cells that contain numbers bigger than 100. If I go over to the Visual Basic, um, then you can see here is the code, exactly what I just showed you on the slide. OK. Uh, now another example of a variation is where we might want to use some increment other than 1. Now you can always do this. You can always use 1 and then multiply by 2 or something like that. Or use a while loop, you know, and add 2 instead of 1 or 3 instead of 1 to your variable. But this is a nice way um, to do it within the for loop structure. So this adds another keyword, which is step. You can leave out step if you just want to use one, but to use another number, it's something like this. So I'm using uh, row 8 and um, going up to column 10. And what I'm doing is for j equals 1, 2, 10, or whatever, in steps of 2, um, change the row, uh, change the cell in row 8, column j, to have color blue. OK, let's try that one. By the way, I gave you a reset color here. So here we go. And you can see it's 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9 are color blue. If I go over to um, the code, then you can see here we are going in steps of 2. And just to play around, I can change this to a 3. Let's reset the colors and then run it. And now you can see it's every third one. Notice I got one more. Um, you have to look carefully at your for loop and think about the way it ends to understand why that happened. Uh, but basically, after I did 9, I still was under 10, so I added 3 to do the last one. OK, so uh, play around with this until you really understand it and have fun.